Tamara, um, just hearing that he has died, taken back into hospital last Friday. He had suffered from ill health for some time. He had done, and of course, one of Europe's most recognisable political leaders, colourful, controversial. He was Prime Minister of Italy at three different times, first in the mid-90s uh, and then up between 2008 and 2011. And of course, endless controversy surrounding him. He was then convicted of, of tax fraud, but has not been in obscurity recently. He actually returned to the Italian Senate just last year, has been very outspoken in his comments about the war in Ukraine, has been described as a, as a Putin apologist uh, by some. And um, there will be much to pick over in Italy about his legacy. Some say paved the way for other populist uh, leaders across Europe and indeed uh, across the pond uh, in the US. And, um, you know, he met all the key figures. There he is with Barack Obama. Of course, he met Tony Blair many times uh, when he was prime minister. And, um, you know, I think for all the controversy that surrounded him, he remained very much at the centre of Italian politics right up until the last few months when sure. we know that he has suffered from serious ill health. I mean, it's, what, 10, 11 years ago now when uh, he was on trial in Milan facing allegations that he paid for sex uh, with uh, a minor and abused um, his power uh, as well. Um, he stepped back or was forced to step back from Italian politics after that. Well, it would have finished off many a, a political career, but he continued to make, um, you know, um, outspoken comments about many um, issues in Italian politics. He's been commenting openly about the... Um, you know, the current Prime Minister, uh, Georgia Maloney, um, he, and since he's been uh, back in the Senate, even in the last few months, um, he's, been, he's been commenting a lot on um, the sort of controversy in Italy about, um, you know, whether to support the war in Ukraine militarily. So he's been very much at the centre of things. And, you know, it's really... He's, re he's really one of the, the most recognisable European leaders of the last couple of decades. And um, I'm sure there will be many paying tribute to him with very mixed emotions, uh, given that, um, you know, he was always someone who said it as he thought. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, there may, there may even be uh, comparisons to another uh, former prime minister here who, uh, you know, um, always, um, always, always said it as, as he thought it was and, yeah. and, uh, and um, perhaps with uh, bigger consequences than, yeah. than him. I think he was worth something like $13 billion uh, at his height. Made his money initially in property, but then went on to be, um, shall we call him a media mogul? Media me mogul, owned football clubs as well, I believe. He made he an made enormous amount of, of money and um, was, through his media empire as well, extremely influential uh, in, in Italian politics and, um, you know, continue, continued that right up until... Um, really the last few months. We, we know he'd had open heart surgery in 2016, but seemed to be very much uh, back in the middle of things after that. There he is with the, with the current Prime Minister. And uh, it's only in the last few days that we learned that he was back in hospital. Yeah, apparently he started his career singing on cruise ships is what I'm hearing, but he then entered the business world uh, in construction back in the 1960s. Um, certainly, as you said, a headline figure as far as European politics uh, was concerned. Um, he went back into hospital, I think I'm right in saying, last Friday. We were told that it was just for um, a checkup, but he had been um, poorly uh, with open heart surgery previously, also had contracted... COVID, I think, three years ago and was incredibly poorly during that time. That's right, yes. Contracted COVID, which, of course, um, was, was um, you know, raging in Italy before it came to the UK. And, um, you know, look, at has had some severe health problems over the last few years, but still seemed to be um, back in the centre of things, even as soon as, e even as recently as the last few months. And... Um, was you know on 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 Italian TV was was seen still as a kind of kingmaker in Italian politics. Um, he sort of hit the headlines in the UK. I'm sure you remember when uh, Tony and Cherie Blair went to went to stay with him. Yeah, um, I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the controversy uh, about that, and you know when. Um, OK, back to you in a second, um, Tamara. Media tycoon who led three Italian governors between 1994 and 2011 has died at the age of 86. Um, Siobhan's on the phone for us. Uh, Siobhan, what more do we know? Good morning. Good morning, Kay. So the news has been through in the last 
10 minutes or so, we knew that Silvio Berlusconi had been readmitted to hospital in Milan on Friday. Um, he's been treated um, for long term, basically for leukemia, and he was going into hospital on Friday for some checkup tests. The doctors didn't feel happy with the results that came back and decided to readmit him. Um, there wasn't a lot of news over the weekend, but this morning we got word from a source at the hospital um, that his situation and his health had deteriorated. And it's now been confirmed uh, by a source to us, as well as in local media uh, in Italy, that Silvio Berlusconi has died at the age of 86 after battling leukaemia. Uh, now, as you were saying, he, of course, is an extremely colourful figure in Italian uh, politics. Um, he started uh, his rise to his billionaire status um, by getting involved, for example, in TV. He was a TV mogul, but also involved in other businesses as well. At one point involved in AC Milan, for example, involved in shopping centres as well. And, of course, a huge figure uh, in politics in Italy as well, managing to bounce back from several scandals, of course, including the Bunga Bunga sex scandals, which held the headlines for weeks and weeks. And despite his age and those scandals, he led Italy uh, three times as prime minister and was back in politics again um, as a senator recently for the uh, Forza Italia party, but his health has been deteriorating. We saw before Christmas a big scare over his health. He'd just spent six weeks uh, in hospital, had recently come out of hospital uh, and then was readmitted, as I said, on Friday. And today the news confirmed that he has died. OK, Bernard Chavon, thank you, nicknamed Il Cavaliera, the knight, um, often uh, considered um, the kingmaker, uh, I think I'm right in saying, tomorrow in Italian politics. That's right. And as to his personal life, he'd been married twice and actually had a what's called a symbolic marriage, so not a legally binding one, to a woman who was aged 32 just last March. Um, so uh, his five adult children reportedly uh, not, not too happy about that and what might happen to his £5 billion fortune. So, um, yes, leading a colourful life right up until the end. Yeah. So if you're just tuning our way, you uh, come to us with the news that the former Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has died at the age of 86, the media tycoon who led three Italian governments, just hearing that from Siobhan there, as you can see, uh, managed to uh, attract political figures not only to Europe but also travelling to the United States as well, the Oval Office there, um, with President Obama. Um, as I said, led three Italian governments between 1994 and 2011. Uh, his Forza Italia party, a junior partner in the current ruling coalition. He'd been suffering from leukaemia for some time. He did contract COVID uh, in December of 2020 and had struggled with the after effects of that. He said that it had been uh, the worst illness of his life. So the breaking news is hour that the former Italian Prime Minister Silvia Berlusconi has died at the age of 86. Top stories live from the Sky News City studio. Breaking news, the former Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has died at the age of 86. Also this hour, American companies say they're losing confidence in investing in the UK. Rishi Sunak calls for Britain to become a global leader in business technology investment as London Tech Week gets underway. A rebrand for the former UK arm of Silicon Valley Bank as HSBC unveils its new tech banking plans. Plus, new research suggests students want a wider range of technology subjects at school, including eSports. Good morning, this is Ian King live in our business and economic news from the heart of the city. 
Well, we start this out with some breaking news. The former Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has died. The 86-year-old media tycoon had been treated in hospital for a lung infection linked to chronic leukaemia. He led the country three times from 1994 to 95, 2001 to 2006 and 2008 to 2011. During his last term in office, Italy came close to a Greek-style debt crisis and he faced numerous scandals, most notably around his notorious Bunga Bunga parties. Our Europe correspondent Adam Parsons has been taking a look back at his life and career. He was impossible to ignore. Silvio Berlusconi was a giant figure in Italian life for decades on end, in politics, business, sport and on the global stage. His fortune was built on broadcasting. He constructed a media empire and made a vast fortune. He spent some of that on moulding AC Milan into Europe's best football team. And then turned his attention to politics. From the centre-right, he led four separate governments, spending more time as Prime Minister than any other post-war Italian politician. We find Silvio Berlusconi guilty. But it was never straightforward. Berlusconi was cited in dozens of criminal investigations, mostly around claims of fraud. He said that was persecution and claimed to have been in court two and a half thousand times. Trouble did follow him. Remember this woman? A Moroccan dancer nicknamed Ruby Heartstealer. Berlusconi was convicted of paying her for sex when she was just 17 years old at one of his lavish bunga bunga parties. <laughs> They were taking part in a burlesque competition and they trained for it because these women, by their very nature, are exhibitionists. They are showgirls and like to put on a show and compete. But he won an appeal and laughed off the scandal. Bunga Bunga became a catchphrase, not a source of shame. Then came a conviction for tax fraud that he couldn't beat. Berlusconi was at his lowest ebb and protested furiously on one of his own TV stations. In exchange for the commitments I have made over almost 20 years in favour of my country and coming almost to the end of my public life, I receive as a reward accusations and a verdict that is founded on absolutely nothing, that takes away my personal freedom and my political rights. He was a global figure. He hosted three G8 meetings. That is a record. But his brand of diplomacy was eccentric. He famously left Angela Merkel hanging around while he took a phone call. Eventually, she walked off. <laughs> he once welcomed a Spanish prime minister warmly to Italy, only to cheerfully stroll away from their joint scheduled press conference, leaving Jose Zapatero utterly bemused. But Berlusconi was blessed with an infectious smile. Rolling Stone magazine once named him their rock star of the year. He had charisma and he knew how to get in touch with people. And uh, even if sometimes uh, he could uh, look like uh, a little bit strange, uh, eccentric, but at the end uh, he was a, a very friendly person. Remarkably, he returned to politics once more, part of the coalition that pushed Giorgio Maloney into power, still a political heavyweight into his late 80s. Silvio Berlusconi was a man who lived for the spotlight. Well, joining me on the line now is our Europe correspondent, Siobhan Robbins. I mean, Siobhan, before he became a politician, he was, of course, uh, one of Italy's most successful ever business people. A lot of questions about what happens to his business empire, but I guess also what happens to Italy's ruling coalition, of which he was a part. Yes, so, as you say, and as Adam was just reporting there, he was a media mogul, a billionaire, and in the 1970s, he created his first cable TV company, and by the 80s, uh, he was basically ruling the airwaves here in Italy. Uh, he went on to invest in a range of other businesses, so having uh, involvement in AC Milan Football Club, for example, in shopping centres. But then, of course, this huge figure 
on the Italian political scene as well, nicknamed the Kingmaker role. And he had three different stints. Uh, leading the country here. One of those made him the longest serving uh, prime minister that Italy has seen. And that's despite the fact that he was uh, linked to so many scandals, of course, the infamous Bunga Bunga scandals, but also a tax fraud conviction allegations of corruption as well. Uh, and despite the fact that he was 86, he was still playing a huge part in politics. Uh, his Forza Italia party um, was part of the ruling coalition. He also was a senator himself, but we have seen his health deteriorating. Uh, in the last decade, he had open heart surgery. And then since the end of last year, there has really been a marked deterioration uh, in his health. He'd been in hospital for around six weeks being treated for complications. Uh, with leukemia, he'd come out and then on Friday gone back for what we're told was a routine we'll take to, for a night, to that, see how he was. Doctors weren't happy then with the results of the test, decided to keep him in. And then today, sources told us that his health really had deteriorated, that his family had gone to his bedside. And it's now been confirmed uh, both by source within the hospital, but also um, from local media here uh, that Silvio Berlusconi has died at the age of 86. Thanks, Yvonne.